The world's largest battery maker teams up with Stellantis in a 50-50 European deal, and it's a 4.1 billion euro investment uh, that they're bringing that could transform Europe's EV landscape in the near future. It's actually one of the biggest deals in the last few years, actually, in the European Union, in the, in the electric vehicle industry. So what does this mean for the industry? What does it mean for us who like to drive cheap EVs and the price of all of the EVs, really, in the, especially the cheaper end of the market? So today we're talking about CATL and Stellantis joining forces to build this massive battery plant in Spain. We'll break down the key details of the investment because it is a very big one so it's noteworthy for sure. Yeah, why it's a big deal and what are the kind of ripple effects that we could see good and bad. Hey folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you very much for tuning in. The last couple of videos uh, got some really good comments. Thank you very much for those. I actually spent an hour before this video, before making this, reading them, all of them really, and uh, I'll get back to you soon. So let's jump into it straight away. So CATL and Stellantis made this deal. There's a lot to unpack. Back in December 2024, they announced uh, that CATL, the world's biggest battery manufacturer, uh, they were going to be a part of a 50-50 joint, ven joint venture with Stellantis, which is the fourth largest automaker globally. And they're putting 4.1 billion euros into a new battery plant in the east of Spain, in quite a good spot, actually. Uh, and it's a place called Zaragoza in Spain. This is expected to go live by mid uh, no, mid-2026 and pump out roughly 50 gigawatt hours of battery capacity per year. So that's a serious amount of battery production definitely needed in the European Union as things stand right now. And I think the timing couldn't really be better. Europe has been scrambling to ramp up its own battery production and uh, or trying to, to cut dependence on imports, uh, especially from China, of course. 85% of the world's batteries came from China in 2024, or 85, 87%, something like that. And this plant fits right into the European Union's long-term plans to build up its own supply chain. Plus, Spain is also positioning itself as a, uh, a log logistical ally, a big player in the EV world, and uh, they're endeavouring to anyway. So don't be surprised if we see more factories pop up. Uh, for a variety of things like electronics and semiconductors, batteries, electric vehicles in Spain. So maybe EV manufacturing plants in the next few years, maybe, because BYD have got uh, got a plant coming in Hungary, which is quite far from Spain. So there's maybe a need to have one a bit closer in the bottom of uh, Europe in the West. So how does this affect the EV market? What does it actually mean for the EV market? What does it mean for us when we're looking for a small, cheap EV? Stellantis, obviously they're doing really well with those sort of cheaper cars. This might help bring the costs down, I think, notably more so in the cheaper cars rather than like Teslas and things like that, of course. Stellantis now has got a steady supply of LFP batteries coming. They're on the way with that. So that means that it's possible that LFP batteries could be in their cars and maybe be cheaper than nickel-based ones. That's conceivable. That could mean lower costs for electric cars under their brands with the better chemistry, so LFP chemistry, if you're wanting the longevity and just, you know the extra safety. So they can also avoid, I think, most of the import taxes. I don't know where the minerals are coming from, so to produce the batteries, and they can be under a tariff, so there could be a 10-20% tax on that, maybe. For CATL, this, I think, is a really clever move. They're already massive in China. It's the world's largest battery company globally. This deal, I think, strengthens their grip on the European market. This is a foot in the door, I think. It's a win-win. Stellantis gets reliable, cost-effective batteries, and CATL expands its footprint in Europe, uh, which is a foot in the door, isn't it? So for us consumers, more competition in battery production usually means lower prices, usually, at least in the EV world anyway. And better technology over time as well, that will all come, and we shouldn't really have to pay too much more for that. If we can avoid tariffs, as, mu as much of the tariff as possible, and there is more competition, then we'll get cheaper cars, I think. Of course, it's not all smooth and simple. The European battery market has seen some really big companies struggle, such as Northvolt, really, really, really struggling, which has been facing financial hurdles, basically closing the doors, maybe in the next couple of years, maybe. And they've already filed for bankruptcy in America. And despite all the European Union's talks, uh, supporting local battery companies, it's not exactly their, their strong point, really. And uh, they're not, you know, battery companies in Europe are not drowning in government incentives at all. So the European Union and a lot of European states are very in my opinion, take, 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 and definitely don't tend to support businesses that align with the, their wants as a state. 
And uh, yeah, that's exactly what they do in China, actually. China want to lead the green tech space and the transition to green, you know, renewable energy and stuff like that. So they, they genuinely give ungodly amounts of cash to manufacturers such as BYD to help them have a leg up in the global market, really. So I think also there's the geopolitical angle. European regulators have been throwing around the idea that, uh, you know, of, of protectionist measures to counter China's growing influence around the world, especially in Europe. So we'll see pushback against CATL's growing role in Europe, I think. Uh, that's something to watch anyway, at least I can make some videos on that in the future. Um, at the end of the day, I think this partnership between CATL and Stellantis is a huge step forward and, uh, you know, Definitely a step toward making Europe more self-sufficient when it comes to EVs. Uh, more local battery production, I think, means better supply chains, quicker wait times, cheaper EVs, things like that. And, uh, yeah, a stronger EV market for us in Europe overall. What, uh, what do you think? Will this move make a difference? Or what, will, will there be good differences or bad differences? What do you think? Or is Europe still too dependent on China, basically, for battery tech? Uh, please write a comment below, and uh, I'd really love to hear your thoughts, even if it's something small or something long and complex. You can write an essay. Honestly, the comments I've been reading lately, they're like pages long. And uh, yeah, if you want to stay in the loop on the latest EV news, please consider subscribing uh, to the channel, because uh, yeah, it might be nice to see my, my channel get a little bit bigger. And, and um, yeah, it's really nice to have people talking in the comments, so thank you very much, and I'll be watching in the comments section, and uh, see you in the next video.